Hey everyone, welcome to All Games New and Old. I'm David Rodriguez, and today we're going to be reviewing Summoner Wars 2nd Edition. Now, this came out just recently in 2021 from Plat Hat Games, and it was designed by Colby Douch. The original Summoner Wars came out in um, 2009, and that was a game that I really went back and forth on buying forever, basically. And it seemed like whenever I was ready to finally just take the plunge and buy like their big box set, it would be out of print. And then I'd kind of fade away from it for a while and it'd come back into print. And then when I wanted to buy it again, it was out of print. It's just the kind of luck I had. And I think part of my hesitation, despite seeing it on multiple people's top 100 or even top 10 lists of all time, was that as cool as it sounded, the art didn't entirely grab me. And then also I also heard it uh, described as, as a, a miniatures war game, but with, with cards. And that's cool, but I also play miniatures war games, so I wasn't sure if I really needed it. Anyway, when they announced the second edition, I was really excited. I saw the new art and really thought it looked fantastic, and I knew I kind of had to pre-order it. So I did. Uh, it finally arrived and got some plays in, and I'd like to tell you about it. So in order to tell you about the theme, let me send you to our fantasy expert, uh, Grungar. Grungar, how you doing? Well, I'm doing terrible. Thanks for asking, you overgrown halfling. Once again, you only talk to me in this ridiculous tavern that's made only for humans and not for dwarves, and I don't appreciate it very much. I can't even get service. Look, I got no, I got no food. My tankard's empty, and I've got coins sitting here on the table. Say, look, look, I'll pay if you just bring me some dang things to eat. But no, no luck. The service here is awful. It's terrible, and I don't want to be here. Anyway, let's talk about your game. Summoner Wars. Let's, there we, Summoner Wars. So, in this game, in the world, there's some big evil guy who got a hold of a summoning stone at one point, and that made him real, real powerful. And then, the other groups all figured out that they could get summoning stones too. Fantastic. So you think they all work together and take down the big bad evil guy, right? No, of course not. What they do instead is they fight over all these summoning stones because, ah, uh, Greed, power, you know, same old story. But, all that's fine, but I know what your audience really wants is to hear Grungar's 0-5 to five Dwarf rating system. I'm only letting you do this because you actually do describe the theme and no one else does. Okay, so, in my 0-5 to five Dwarf rating system, 0 Dwarfs means there's 0 Dwarfs in the game, 5 Dwarfs means there's 5 or more Dwarfs in the game. But more complicated than that. You see, in this game, there is one army that's dwarves, and there's seven different dwarven unit types. So, we have seven out of the five dwarves needed for a perfect score, putting it at 140% perfect. But, the dwarves are only one-sixth of the factions in the box. One-sixth of 140% is 23.3%, and that's pretty low. But, one of the factions are those goblin-looking things that I love stomping, which adds at least 25%, so now we're at 48.3%. Because the game is expandable, they could add more dwarves in the future, which makes it 10% better, and now we're at 58.3% of a perfect score. The leader of the dwarves is a beautiful and strong lass named Zvara. When I see her, oh, my heart nearly beats out of my chest. That easily adds 25%, bringing the score to 83.3%, but there are L's in it, so minus 5%, dropping it back down to 78.3%. So, 5 is the maximum, and 78.3% of 5 is 3.92, so final score for this game, 3.92 out of 5 dwarves. Not bad, Summoner Wars. Okay, well, I'm not totally sure if your math really checks out. I'm not a mathematician much myself. Uh, but hey, you live in a fantasy world, maybe it works out perfectly there. I don't know. But anyway, um, that was that was his score based on the doors in the game. Um, before I get to my score and my wife's score, I'm going to show you a little bit how this, how this game is played. It is shockingly easy. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so I have set up the board here uh, for one of the factions. I'm only really showing you half the board. This is actually the midpoint right here, and the other faction would, uh, would put out their units on the other side. So when you start the game, you're going to have your draw pile. You're going to have a few of your tokens out, 
And then the first player is going to start with two magic. This is your magic tracker right here. The second player will start with three. So uh, first player basically has that sort of as its uh, disadvantage for going first. Now, depending on the facts you choose, you're going to go ahead and look at your summoner. And on the back of the summoner card, it's going to tell you how to set up for, uh, for that particular faction. So in this case, I have the Temple Priest here. I have the Ten Point Gate there. I have the Citadel Knight over there. And then my summoner would go right here. Now, the goal of this game is to defeat your enemy's summoner. That's really all you have to do. There's no other win conditions. The summoner has to die. So uh, it's trickier than it might seem, but that's, that's the basic gist of it. Uh, so every player is going to start with a hand of five cards uh, drawn randomly. And when you're ready to go, uh, you go through the entire turn phase, which is actually really nicely printed down here at the bottom of the board. This game is, again, super easy to teach. I mean, it says it's for ages nine and up, which is um, which I thought almost sounded too good to be true, but... It is really simple as far as the basic rules, and, and I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So every turn, you're going to go through all these steps of the turn. So start a turn, you're going to discard all your active events. So events, like this one, Renewed Hope, will sometimes say active on there. And when you play those, you're going to put those right there. And whatever the power is that that gives you is going to stay active until the beginning of your next turn. So uh, in this case, if that had been out, I would go ahead and discard that and uh, move on with my turn. So the second action that you can do then is to summon. So every faction has these gates and you can build more, but when you summon, what you're gonna do is you're gonna look at your hand and you're gonna pick a unit that you wanna summon. Obviously you don't have to do this, but it's usually a good idea to get some units out. So if I wanted to, for instance, summon that Citadel Archer, I would look right here and that would show me the magic cost to summon it. In this case, it's two. So I'd move my tracker down two points and then I can put this new unit adjacent to any of my gates. And it's important to note that adjacent in this game doesn't include diagonal. Diagonal is just not a thing in this game, so uh, best not to think about it too much, but I could put uh, this particular unit right here if I liked, as an example. So once I've summoned all the units I wanted to summon and I can afford to summon, we're gonna go to the move phase. In the move phase, you can move up to three of your units up to two spaces each. So I could uh, move her like that and move this gentleman over here, I can move my summoner if I wanted to, up to two spaces, and, and as the board becomes more full, it becomes harder and harder to pick which units you want to move and how you want to move them. So uh, that limit of three is, um, is kind of a big deal. So the third thing you can do is you can build. So if you have structures in your deck, you can build those. The most common are more gates, which have a few uh, less hit points than the one you start with. But to build a gate, all you have to do is put it in the back three rows of your area or adjacent to your summoner. Your summoner could be all the way on the enemy side if, if uh, that's where she got to, and you could still build a gate over there. But uh, in this case, I would probably pick, uh, let, let's say I'd pick it over here. So that can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be anywhere near your summoner if it's in that back three rows. Then the fourth action you can do is the attack action. And that's going to bring in some of the tokens that we have. So I'll show you how those work as well. So I'm going to go ahead and put this enemy on the board just to give you an idea of how this is going to work. So when you're at your attack action part of your phase, it's important to note that if you don't attack, then your summoner will take one wound. So you want to make sure you attack something. Uh, it doesn't really pay to just turtle up and try to avoid combat in this game because you don't want your summoner hurt any more than, uh, than she has to be. So when it comes time to attack, you're going to look at uh, your units. And for instance, this one, oh, hello, let's get that in the picture. <laughs> she has uh, her attack strength right here, and there's a sword next to it, which means she does a melee attack, which means she has to be adjacent to the enemy to attack it. Now, her strength is two. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get two dice, because you basically roll one die for each um, point of strength that the character has. You're going to roll it. And since she's doing a melee attack, we're going to look for the sword icons. In this case, I got one sword icon, so I would go ahead and put one damage on this Beast Rider, and these are your damage tokens. Now, some of your characters don't have the sword. Some of them have the bow and arrow, which is basically the range icon. They'll still have their strength, though, and they can basically attack any enemy that is within three sp clear spaces of them. So she could attack the, the Beast Rider, because it's one, two, three. If, on the other hand, they had the gate between them, she could not attack that Beast Rider. 
So in her case, she has a strength of two as far as like the basic attack. I'm not getting into their special abilities right now. So she would roll and she would look for the bow and arrow icon. In this case, she had two of them. So she would do two damage to that beast rider. Now you may have noticed that on some of the dice sides it has this little like swishy symbol. And what that does varies just depending on the units you have. And they'll usually explain on the card what rolling those means for you. Sometimes it'll be because of a, um, an event that you have out that it'll do something. So that really varies just depending on the, uh, the cards you have. And then these tokens over here are the boost tokens. And those don't do any one particular thing for uh, all the armies. It's again dependent on the cards you have. Some of them will have you uh, put like boost tokens on them and then uh, sometimes when they get to a certain number something will happen or they can spend them to make certain things happen. And that's how the boost tokens work. So the final, or not quite the final, but almost the final part of your phase is the magic phase. And the magic phase is basically how you're going to get more magic. So what you can do is you can discard as many of your cards as you want to, and for each one that you discard, in this case I discarded two, I will get a magic point. Now that's really important because you want to be able to summon things in future turns. And some of the units, like this one, this is a champion, she costs quite a lot. She costs uh, six magic to summon, so sometimes you really have to save up. But that's how you get the magic to summon new units. And that's the basic gist of it. That, that's pretty much everything as far as the basic rules go. Um, obviously, each army has its own quirks, and you really have to figure out how to use them. They're all kind of different. The army that I was showing here are the Vanguard. They're probably the most straightforward, but uh, they all have their little things that they're, they're good at and bad at. So that's the overview. Um, I guess uh, it's time for us to tell you what we thought of this game. All right, I hope that play overview is useful to you. Uh, before we get into our thoughts, I do want to give a shout out to Plat Hat Games. If you happen to watch my unboxing video for this, you might have noticed that my box was pretty mangled. <laughs> um, and I even said in the video that it was okay, I would just tape it, you know, no big deal. But they actually saw the video and reached out to me about replacing my box. So that's why this box is a lot uh, shinier and prettier than what I had before. So uh, thanks to Hat Games, that's awesome customer service. So uh, I just want to make sure I said that. Um, now on to our thoughts of this game. We played quite a few times. Uh, a couple of our early times we actually played a rule wrong. We uh, missed that. You're supposed to get magic when you defeat an enemy card, which made the magic real um, scarce. Uh, but we did eventually get it right and actually play that way, so we can tell you about how it really is actually supposed to work. Um, so I guess let's start with the art. Um, do you have any thoughts on the art? I love the artwork. Um, I think they did a really good job of making each army have a different look to it. Um, ha and just, and they were really, uh, encompassing of different races and mm. different styles. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I mean, it's, you know, when we're talking about fantasy people, I mean, obviously they're not like a one-to-one -one with, um, you know, different ethnicities and whatnot in the real world, but uh, it's nice that not everybody looks exactly the same, and I'm not even just talking about like the, the goblins aren't going to look like anybody, but the people who are vaguely human-esque all look pretty different, which I think is really cool. The art style is great. I mean, I'm sure, I think I talked about this every time I've opened my mouth about this in this video or in my unboxing video, but, you know, I, um, the original Summoner Wars first edition, I always heard it was great, but I just was not super into the art, so I, I, that was part of the reason I think I never took the plunge there. The art on this is, is really good. I don't know, it's sort of like a weird amalgam of, um, comic book and anime and cartoon. I'm not sure exactly what I would compare it specifically to, but, um, really neat. I, I, I think the art's fantastic and I'm, I'm so excited to see what, uh, what future factions look like just because um, the art's uh, so incredible, I think. So it uh, really drew me to it. I guess it's a personal taste thing whether or not you prefer this or, or the kind of um, darker, sort of grittier look that I think the previous edition had, but I absolutely love this. Um, as far as component quality, I mean, it's all, I mean, there's a board and um, cards and some tokens. Uh, did you have any thoughts of the components at all? I think the components are good. Um, the tokens are nice, heavy card stock. Um, the cards are your kind of traditional cards, and you have to shuffle the decks, so it makes sense that they're not a heavier card stock. Mm -hmm. um, so I think all the components are well. I do too. I think... Um... This might be a game that I want to sleeve the cards. I'm not one of the people that sleeves every single game I get. I just, 
I just don't. Um, but this one I, I might actually, uh, because um, especially right now I, I I'm still exploring to figure out which, which factions I like the best. I think they all offer something very different. And so that's going to mean like I'm going to be shuffling these decks a lot. So um wouldn't hurt to maybe start slaving the cards. But uh, but it's not because the card quality is bad by any stretch. It's it's uh, it's really good, I think. so. I think if you get a sleeve, too, that has like a little bit more of the um, texture backing to mm. it, it'll help, too, because sometimes it, as we're moving cards around, we would knock a card and we'd have to put it back to where it was. So. Yeah, yeah, they can kind of end up getting a little spun on the board, which can matter because, you know, uh, the way they're facing um, denotes who's controlling that particular unit, and depending on the factions you're playing, that can actually sort of change at various points in the battle. So, I, you know, th that's a minor, super minor thing. But yeah, I, th I think you're right. I think a textured, a, a little bit more of a textured back rather than the super slick backings would probably be better, but I think I think you'd be okay. Um, Either way, um, how did you feel as far as the, um, I guess the theme being married to the gameplay, you know what I mean? Um, um, I think the theme works well, like you can very easily see the theme of, of the game as you're playing it. Um, I, I think they did a really good job of making each fashion very different. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, we... Between the two of us, we played all the fashions, and we even played, you know, some of us, uh, like, we played the same ones as each other, and, um, like, each time I played a different fashion, it, the game felt different, and they played differently, so, um, I think they did a really good job of making it very diverse. Yeah, I, I agree. I think, um, uh, it's interesting, because you look at it, I'm not sure exactly the what, how many spaces by how many spaces the grid is off the top of my head, but... You wouldn't think with that, like, you could really have that many kind of interesting scenarios play out, but there were so many things where I'm like, oh, I could see this person doing this thing over here, or this is going on over here, and um, I really, you know, it, it really kind of felt like a battlefield to me, and, and all the weird sort of things that could happen on a, on a battlefield where you've got magic and, you know, units getting summoned out of nowhere, it, it uh, really, really fantastic. It, it I think it, um, it's married to the theme much more than I actually expected it to. I thought it'd be like, well, here's your factions and this is what it's about and it's fine. But it, I really felt like there was some crazy battlefield shenanigans going on. I thought it was really, really fun. Um, so I guess really the, the main thing is uh, the gameplay. Um, do you want to start? Sure. All right. Um, I, really, I really like this game a lot. I think it's really straightforward. There's a few times where it's like, um, because you do the same steps in the same order every time. Um, there's times where I was like, oh, I really wish I could do this in a different order. Um, there's some fashions that have cards that let you do that. So that's kind of cool. Um, the one, there's one rule that kind of, I get kept getting tripped up on, um, and it's the within so many spaces rule um because you can't have characters on top of each other and so to me it was like okay if i can get next to that person that counts right but it's not um so i had so that kept kind of that rule kept tripping me up when i would have a card that had within x amount of spaces um my brain was just having a hard time understanding exactly how far out that meant um but beyond that, I really like the game. I think it's a pretty simple game to pick up. There's a lot of, um, you know, some of the fashions are easier to play than others. Um, and a lot of it's just a matter of reading the card and understanding what each card does. Um, so I think it's a game that has a lot of learning to it to kind of master the different fashions, but as far as just picking it up and playing it, I think it's a pretty easy game to do that. Yeah, I agree. I was actually, um, frankly shocked at how easy it was to learn. And, you know, other than the, the real specifics about, you know, what dice to roll and all that, like, the, the little thing on the board where it shows you your step-by-step, -step, I mean, that almost, you can't quite learn just off that, but that covers so much. And if you're at all confused, I mean, it, it reminds you so well right there. It's, it's amazing to me, frankly, that a game that's so easy to learn is um, is as deep as it is. Uh, there's 
there's a lot when you get into the factions, like really learning how to use them best. Um, there's one of the the factions, the um, Polar Dwarves, I believe, that I think was the first one I played with. And, you know, I got through our game and I was like, okay, I see what these, what this faction does, but I, I don't feel like I have a, I don't feel like I've, I've mastered how to do that. And so I'm really looking forward to getting in there and, and playing with them more and really trying to work out how to use them best. And it's funny because I don't, I don't think their uh, play style is necessarily the way I'd usually go about things, but I, I don't know, something about their, the, the puzzle of them kind of intrigues me. So and I think there's like that. There's things like that for all the factions, and I think um, different factions are gonna catch people sort of differently. But just exploring the different factions and seeing how they play, and then playing against different factions with those factions, it's it's crazy how much there is for uh, such a light amount of rules. It, it's super impressive. I, I don't know how this particular um, this version compares to the other one as far as that. I, I imagine they're at least somewhat similar, but. Um, I, you know, it's, it's really impressive how, how much variety they squeeze into such a light roll set. Um, you know, I, I heard this game described previously as a, a miniatures war game without miniatures, and I don't think that's quite accurate because miniatures war games, you have a lot more freedom of how you move around, but it is sort of a similar thought process that goes in for sure, even if the gameplay is not quite the same, and it's much easier to just get this out and get to the table than a miniature <laughs> war game by just packing up your miniature war game takes longer than it takes less to play paint. this. Yeah, less paint, <laughs> too, which is, I mean, I love painting, but dang, man. Whew. Okay. Anyway, but uh, but yeah, I, I really, really like this, and it's so exciting to me to try the different armies and try those armies against the other armies. Just... There's a ton of replayability here, and it's not this gigantically long game by any stretch. So, like, you can really hammer those out and try a bunch of different things, and it's really, really fun to do so. So, with all that being said, should we talk about our final scores? Sure. Do you want to go first? Yeah. All right. Um, I would give it an 8. I think it's a really solid game. I really liked it. Um, the balance in the fashions, um, some of them I felt really, really balanced, and then there's a couple of them that I'm like, I, there's especially one fashion that just seems to kind of overpower the rest of them. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's good for someone that's like brand new to gaming, um, but it's one of those things where it's like, it because of the small things, it just make, it makes the game just a little bit le less. Um, but it is a really fun game and I'm excited to still play it and I really want to, you know, figure out some of the fashions and really make them work um as well as i can yeah i agree i'm actually also giving it an eight and uh i could see this is a game where my estimation of it may actually rise over time and i do not think it's going to drop because of the sheer variety there is here but i think as i as more and more the armies really click with me and i feel like i'm getting like deeper into the the strategies involved i'm probably going to love it more and more i already think it's it's a really great game i do agree about the one faction it's just i can't we played with them, at least in a game somewhere between us, probably more than any of the other factions, and I can't spot a weakness with them at all. Like, most of, most of the others are some kind of thing they need to really pull off to be successful, or, you know, oh, they're really strong over here, but they're not good over here. The human faction, the Vanguard, uh, they, they have, uh, they're tough, they dish out a lot of damage, they get magic really well, they can heal. Like, I, I just don't... I feel like any time uh, we're playing with them, whoever is the other army is really on the back foot the whole time, and it's hard, hard, hard to get past them. Uh, and, you know, there was one game where we were both really sleepy, and, and you were missing some of the benefits <laughs> that they got and when you were playing as them, and you still did really, really well. I mean, it was a closer fight than it sometimes is, but... I mean, uh, please let me know in the comments if you disagree with that, if you see a weakness, or if you don't feel they're that powerful. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But for us, wow, just every game we played in, if they were involved, they they dominated. And, you know, I think you're right about that being the army that you get to someone who's who's new to gaming. I, I originally thought it was for someone new to the game, but I think if you've played almost any games, you're going to pick up on them right away because there is not really a trick. Like, they're just good. 
They're just good. They can go forward. They support each other really well. They're just... They're super easy to get a grip with. And they're super powerful. So I think someone very new to gaming, that would be great. Because th the rules of the game are easy enough to learn. They can play that without feeling like it's it's punishing. Because they'll probably have a good chance of winning, even though they haven't played many games before. Um, if that was the plan from Plathead, which I don't know if it was. I'm, I'm kind of guessing maybe that that was the intention. I kind of wish they'd done it a little differently. I wish they'd made that army a little more balanced. And if they wanted that to be the truly like beginner army, maybe have some alternate cards that you could swap in for somebody who's who's brand new to make them a little tougher, but but not have that be the base of the army. Because as it is, um, I feel almost bad bringing them out against somebody uh, unless that person's super great at whatever army they're playing. I don't think I would want to bring them out against someone who I felt was like in the same ballpark of skill as me. That's the one I bring out if like I need a handicap because they're so damn, like they're the world champion of Summoner <laughs> Wars and I need to do something, I will then bring out the Vanguard and, you know, feel like I've got decent odds of, of winning. <laughs> so, uh, so, but... So, sorry, you're going to play against me? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you, you always win. So, um, what I figure is every five times you beat me, which will be every time five times we play, <laughs> I'll bust out the Vanguard on the next one and then I'll play as them. Sure. And then I've got a 50-50 shot. Even though they're way overpowered, <laughs> still a 50-50 shot. That's, I, know how, I know how this is. I know how it goes. I played a lot of games. Look at all this. Beats me. <laughs> Just about all of them. It's embarrassing. Just that I can't win. Not because it's her. <laughs> I know she's a genius. That's why. I'm just going to ramble. So, um, anyway. Onward. So we both, both gave it an 8. Uh, any other thoughts about the game at all? Um, I think it's great. Um, I'm excited to see what they're going to add to it. Me too. I have subscribed to their... I don't know if that's something they're still offering or not, but at least when I pre-ordered this, you could, sit, could subscribe to a thing where whenever they came out with the next box of factions, they would just kind of send you that. So I can't wait. I don't know when it's coming, but that's okay. In the meantime, I've got plenty plenty to play with just out of the box. But those are our thoughts on Summoner Wars. Both of us gave us eights. Gave us eights. Gave it eights. We're tens. <laughs> Game eight. Uh, <laughs> so... <laughs> If this video is useful to you, uh, please hit like and subscribe and click the little bell icon so you can know when I put a video out. And I'll see you all around the table again at All Games New and Old. Bye. Bye. The original Summoner Wars came back or came out <laughs> way back in uh, 29... Or, oh, wow, let's just start over. Great, okay. <clears throat> drinky, drinky. Ragnar, take it away. Shoot, that's all right. Grugnar, how are you doing? Grengar, Grugnar, Grengar. Grengar. Let's try this again. So, five is the maximum, and 78%... Yeah, whoa. Pardon. It's a pretty good summer horse, not bad at all. Pretty good summer horse, not bad at all. Anyway, uh, next time. Wow. What the fuck? What the fuck? Yes, wow. Okay. Where? What happened to my brain?